And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two between Temple Storm and Cognitive underway right now. The battleground is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. The battleground that's all about aggression. It's all about lane clearance in the early game. Getting yourself a strong solo laner to put in that bottom lane. Get, and as, uh, conversely, get good wave clear. Make sure you can dictate the flow of that wave clear. Force the enemy team to deal with the minions always constantly pushing in. And from there on out, this map at times can be a little snowball-y. So if you can find yourself at an early advantage and you, ne you never let go of that advantage, whoever gets that one are going to be able to be the victors here. So, the ban out on Zeratul Temple st from Temple Storm, J. Howe. Straight up respect ban. Not a surprise at all. Glaurong has been dominant on Zeratul since we've been following today. And we saw the Tassadar pick coming out, which is a counter in terms of vision to be able to spot that and prepare. Glaurong says, I don't care. I'm still doing damage. And Temple Storm says, we don't want any more of it. Lee Ming being the ban here. So Tempest Storm has an option. They can get themselves the Rhaegar. I think that's what they're going to go with here. Rhaegar, despite his, uh, his, his tweaks, as you can say, still an incredibly strong hero. We saw Tempo Storm ban out Rhaegar, and that's how much respect they have. But now that they say, hey, we have first pick now again, we're going to go for Rhaegar. We're going to make sure Zeratul's off the board. But Cognitive, not afraid to shy away. Once again, going with Stitches, who a lot of people are now considering the best or one of the best warriors in the game right now since yeah, a lot of the certainly. recent changes. Especially on a, a battleground like this where pickoffs can set, just set the tone for a match. Uh, I'm not surprised to see that pickup as well. We saw that the Caterpillar wasn't landing huge hooks back to back, but when he was landing hooks, the follow-up from his teammates were there, and they always were impactful. And that's what it's all about with Stitches. You can land early game hooks all you want to, but it boils down to can you hit the right targets, and can you get it at the right time? Are your teammates going to follow up? And that's, and every single, a big yes to all three of those in the last match. So Caterpillar on that Stitches, continuing to be a threat here. Temple Storm, though, you see him. They're highlighting that Tassadar. Tassadar is a great tool at dealing with Stitches because obviously it gives you the vision to see where he is and be able to predict how to dodge those hooks out. But more importantly, throw a big shield on the target that gets hooked, mitigate a lot of that initial burst damage that comes up from hooks. But uh, it, they might go with Sagara. This battleground, a lot of the time from Temple Storm, what they do, this is their what they, they like to do on this battleground, is put more emphasis on zone control and harassment. Zagara, Lunara, Tassadar, so on and so forth. We do see the Zagara coming out, that vision that you can put on one of the turn-in points and basically defend the other one to keep an eye on both, essentially, is huge on this map to be able to delay anything. We see a lot of teams, they really put a priority on the first turn-in. It allows you to kind of get that early advantage, possibly rotate that over. It's not a guarantee, but it is something that we see often. And not surprised at all there with that Jaina pickup. Obviously a great follow-up there on that hook. Will we finally see our Malfurion now that Rhaegar is off the board? Yeah. And, and there's a lot of options here for Cognitive moving forward where Tempo Storm securing a very strong draft early on as we're now into the second wave of bans. One thing I would like to see paired up with Rhaegar, if they're going to go with that Lightning Shield build, put it on someone who benefits it quite a bit. Obviously, Zeratul is not going to be there. Temple Storm isn't a team to run Illidan. Uh, Thrall, I think, is the, in, an extraordinarily strong hero on this battleground. They already have a Zagara as well. Uh, maybe, I don't know, we'll see how the draft goes here with that Johanna being picked up here. I like the Johanna, though, because as I mentioned, when we first got into this draft, wave clear is paramount. Johanna, with Knight takes Pawn and other talents she can put emphasis on into her Condemn at level 4 and level 7, one of the best wave clears, if not the best wave clear, of any warrior in the pool right now. Getting into the second band of four cognitive, this is going to basically determine what they don't want to have or what they're looking for. With the next picks, I mean, this is kind of interesting. Kel'Thas, we know we've talked about it already. Faye, of course, likes that, but they've already got Jaina. They said, hey, we've got Jaina. That's enough of the mages that we need. Let's take Kel'Thas off the board. These lanes are kind of narrow, and this map is small, especially when you talk about a three-lane map. So the potential for those choke points and the spread of that chain bomb at 13 is real, and now getting that Tyranda ban off the board. Cognitive gonna go with Lunara, or excuse me, Lunara, and uh, securing quite a bit of damage on that back line between Lunara and Gina. I like the Lunara pickup. I would really like the Tassadar pickup. That's I mentioned how Temple Storm, they've they've gone on record saying how on this battleground they want to go more of a zone control harassment sort of style. And Tassadar and Lunara are besides Zagara are the best heroes at doing that. If if Temple Storm got their hands on Tassadar and Lunara, the the amount of harassment and poke and so capability that they had would almost be borderline indefinite to deal with. Uh, so not only are they strong pickups or cognitive, but conversely they are also denial pickups as well.
How do you like this? If Stitches lands a hook, we're at level 10. We've got our force wall. We've got Lunara who's going to be able to get the slow. Jaina with the slow. Whoever's getting hooked is going to have a hard time getting out of there. So, you know, you got to be very careful. If you've got somebody like Johanna on that front line, we saw a lot of Sray picks who was on Muradin who was able to survive a lot of that. With Johanna with that iron skin, it does make it tough. You really have to land the right pick. But we saw great positioning by Tempo Storm last game to avoid a lot of the potential kills from those hooks. And uh, I really think we're going to see a lot of the same. So Tempo Storm, of course, playing it very well. Well, against stitches but uh they pick up a rainer pick who again this is one of his strongest maps with that season marksman and hey we're finally going to be seeing our thrall the the war chief is here ladies and gentlemen and the orc brothers are reunited again on the battleground a tomb of the spider queen i said how i want to see someone like thrall in the field he's going to benefit from that lightning shield of Rhaegar so much he already is a threat and this draft from temple storm is so well rounded in the early stages of the game you can put either thrall or zagara in that bottom lane their wave clear is phenomenal their team fighting capability is phenomenal they have the harassment poke and so potential of zagara and rainer they have the initiation potential of thrall the offensive potential of Rhaegar. I really like this draft from Temple Storm quite a bit here. Cognitive, though, they go in with a solo support Tassadar here. This is something we've seen them do before. I believe if uh, memory serves me well, they actually won the match the one time I saw them do it. I'm not sure on the record with solo support Tassadar, but uh, definitely something unorthodox that we're seeing uh, put into play here. Cognitive is up a game, so they're not going to be afraid to do, you know, kind of, uh, you know, pull out tricks from their sleeve. Now, this Lunara, is, yeah, this is interesting. Lunara obviously is going to benefit from, especially if they go at level 4, which I imagine they will, she's going to benefit from those auto-attack heals. Stitch is obviously able to heal himself, and if Jaina is able to go with that Frostbolt build, which sometimes you wonder, will it be? I imagine w that we will see that. She's going to be able to keep a nice, decent range, but at the same time, a solo Tassadar is not always the easiest. I mean, if you lose the early part of a team fight, you basically have to give it up. So we're about to get into game number two, ladies and gentlemen. Again, with this being finals, it is a best of three, obviously, because we're here right now. So Temple Storm are going to be looking to, <laughs> sorry, are going to be looking to bring this to game number three. A uh, big shout out to uh, my good friend Zoya uh, in the chat right around the end of game number one, taking the baseball bat and pointing it into the stands going, it's okay. The comeback's going to happen right here. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Jared, obviously Zoya is the uh, manager and coach for the uh, Temple Storm. So he's feeling confident about that, despite maybe not looking at their normal form in game number one. They know what they're doing here. We're going to get into game number two. You hear that count? We're getting into the match right now, man. And this is going to be a very, very fun match. I'm really looking forward to see what Tempo Storm does. I love their composition. I love it, especially for this map. And then looking at Cognitive, you know, they're going with something a little less traditional. Obviously, Leoric, he's going to be able to get in and out of danger. He'll be able to do what he needs to do. But at the same time, Solo Tassadar, you don't see a lot of it. We're about to find out what yeah. happens. I, I like the rest of the composition there, and uh, this is going to be a great one. Tomb of the Spider Queen, always uh, a favorite of mine. So here we go, guys. Let's introduce these teams once again. You guys know them. You guys love them. Sray is going to be on Johanna. Soldier on Raynor. Hey, man. Zix on Rhaegar. <laughs> Goku on the War Chief Thrall. And rounding it out is going to be KO and one of his personal favorite heroes, Zagara. Taking a look at Cognitive, we do have Iacona going to be on Tassadar, Caterpillar on Leoric, Glaurung on Stitches, Calvin Luck on Lunara, and Faye playing that back line as usual, going to be there on Jaina. So the gates are about to be down. This game is about to be underway. Taking a look at the level one talents, looks like some pretty standard stuff across the board. No surprise to anyone, it's a Knight Takes Pawn for Johanna at level one. We're going to see that Chain Lightning emphasis at level one, more than likely Rolling Thunder at level four as well. The Lightning Shield build from Rhaegar. I'm sure that we're going to continue to see uh, more emphasis on the Lightning Shield here because the Orc Brothers are paired up right now. Uh, you know, we, we've seen, you know, Cleanse, we've seen... Uh, you know, other talents being put into the Ghost Wolf and whatnot, but I think what would benefit Temple Storm right now with the draft and this map would be put a lot of emphasis into those Lightning Shield talents. I'm really curious what type of rotation we're going to see from Cognitive. They have four heroes that are all going to benefit from a rotation here, as we are seeing Conjurer's Pursuit on two heroes, the reanimation for Leoric, and then Hungry for more on Stitches. Will we see a four-person rotation? It does look like Tassadar, they're going to leave him in the bottom. He's great at solo lane clearing at least for what he's worth. The rest of the members at does look like we're going to have a 4-4 four four rotation between middle and top lanes. 
And that's pretty much the uh, normal business strategy here on uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen. That's what these teams generally try to do. Obviously, the wave clear of Leoric, super beneficial for Cognitive, and the wave clear of Johanna, equally as beneficial for Tempo Storm. Down to the bottom lane, it's going to be a Tassadar versus Zagara matchup. This uh, Zagara generally will come out ahead in this matchup. Oh, and hold that thought. The Warchief gets taken out. First Blood missed by myself. Way to go here. But uh, First Blood going to Cognitive. Yeah, we did see the rotation, a very aggressive rotation there by Cognitive. Once again, they're already turning in some gems, trying to get some of that out. It looks like they backed off, actually. And they're going to go ahead and commit, try and get down here. Sray, the Iron Skin is there. No Dwarf oh, Toss. Man. The body block is real. The second kill going out there on Johanna. Nice rotation. They were committed to turning in and said, wait a minute, we've got somebody caught out here. Already Cognitive are putting themselves in just a very good spot. Level 4, get themselves a wave of Web Weavers, continue to push in these lanes, and more importantly, continue to get pickoffs. If even Johanna can't even be safe from this put, uh, kind of roaming coming out from Cognitive, you, this is instilling fear into every single team member of Tempo Storm. So we'll see if they can just maybe get themselves together, position themselves accordingly. As Really, as far as the lane phase go, they've really lost it. They've lost control of it significantly between those two takedowns and not getting ahead with their wave clear. That's really what opened up those two takedown opportunities. And speaking of which, we do see Tempo Storm. There's the aggression they need right there. They take down phase Jaina. And that is getting themselves on the board right there. Caterpillar getting out of that Wraith Walk is going to be very beneficial. Now, one of the things with Tassadar on that bottom lane, he's going to be able to neutralize pretty much all the creep that Zagara is yeah, going to be able to put exactly. down. That's going to be very good. But we do have to caution that Raynor, with those Season Marksman stacks, and of course those 13 and 16 talents for Zagara, they're going to be very strong late game. As this game goes on, they keep up their rotations. There's a lot of potential for Tempo Storm in this late game here. As they rotate down, trying to get Iancona, who's going to be able to get out of there just fine. If that was any other hero uh, except maybe Falstad, that more than likely would have been a takedown yeah. for uh, for, Cog or for Tempo Storm right there. So uh, good heads up play by Ayakona. Sarei gets hooked up there. Iron Skin already on cooldown. Going to be able to heal away before she gets takes too much damage. Caterpillar's got to be careful. He does have level 4. Harden Bones is online for Leoric. Leoric pre-level 4 is actually pretty easy to exploit and take out uh, and get easy takedowns on. But once he does hit that damage mitigation of Harden Bones on that Wraith Walk, he actually can be really, really aggressive with his positioning and obviously get himself out of a tight bind. And speaking of which, Soldier gets hooked up. We do see the damage going out, but Soldier able to stay alive. Nice knockback there. And uh, one of the things I guess that we find curious, or at least I do, is Tassadar at level 4 is going to go with the mental acuity for that cooldown. And that's not going to be any heals coming out there at level 4. So they're yep. going to rely heavily on the team not taking any damage on that back lane. While we're going to have Leoric and Stitches trying to heal up there. And they, they are capable of healing themselves, yep. but how much? Yeah, I mean, Jane obviously doesn't have any. Tassadar really doesn't have any, except once he hits level 13, level 16, but you don't want to, you know, those aren't reliable heals. Those are more of, you know, get yourself the hell out of dodge sort of situations. But, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting to see this played out. Well, the last time I saw them play the Soul Support Tassadar, it was mostly surrounded by self-sustained heroes, ETC, uh, Stitches, heroes like that. But uh, it's, it's going to be interesting how this plays out. So in the state of a long, drawn-out team fight. The, uh, I feel like it's going to favor Temple Storm a little bit just because they do have the heals. The shields can only do so much uh, in, in long, drawn out team fights as far as a war of attrition. But generally, on the Battleground of Team Spider Queen, the battleground or the, the, the fights aren't long and drawn out. They are, they're very aggressive, they're very decisive, and they blow up very early on. The hook coming out, grabbing Sray. Sray trying to get out of there, but one of the things I really like, Tempo Storm denying the turn-in here at this bottom uh, turn-in point, as we are going to see Glaurung trying to zone everybody out, but the root coming out, they are going to get the Chain Lightning off to poke Faye in that back line. Denying this once again, Tempo yep. Storm would love to be able to turn it in, as they are keeping the experience very even, but we saw just in that bottom lane, KO down here going up against Iacona. Got to be careful, he's taking a lot of damage right now. Zix uh, just being aggressive, being that fight doggy that we all know and we love him for. So there is that emphasis on the Lightning Shield talents at level 4 and level 1. Uh, Faye going... I'm sorry, not Faye. I'm so used to seeing Faye on that hero. Tassadar actually gets taken out right there. I believe that was in the bottom lane. So Goku takes out Tassadar. An uncharacteristic mistake for Mayakona. Not only uh, being taken off the map right as the Web Weavers descend, but more importantly, giving up quite a stash of gems with that take down right there. That's something Temple Storm uh, needed right there. They are at a little bit of an experience deficit, but that experience deficit is, start to gr is going to be growing here in just a little bit as the Web Weavers are going to start pushing down these structures. Tempo Storm was extremely close to having the Web Weavers of their own. Instead, we are going to see this coming out as we do see a little bit of aggression coming out there that's the power of Rhaegar right now we saw him take a 
chunk out of Calthan Luck, and we are going to see a top push here while we do see Tassadar and Leoric going to try and man that middle and bottom lanes, but this front gate already down. I'm not sure if they'll be able to get a fort this early, but they are going to continue to try and do a little bit of damage. I like this approach right now from Cognitive. Yeah, just uh, spreading themselves across the map in all three lanes while at the same time putting a, um, emphasis into one lane instead of kind of going all in into one lane, which really we don't see teams do that frequently early on on a battleground. Um, just because the, the web weavers obviously early on don't scale as well in the early stages of the match. But nonetheless, they get the uh, the front tier tower, tier one towers in the mid lane. They get them in the top lane, bottom lane. They got them as well. And that, as I mentioned, they now find themselves at a one level experience advantage. More importantly, they're soon to have that level, these level 10 heroics. Iacona continuing to do what he does, clearing out all of this creep. That has to be quite a nuisance there for Zagara, wondering, hey, what can I do? Basically, Zagara's vision being completely neutralized. Looking at the top here, Calton Luck already coming out straight, popping that iron skin, able to get out of there. Caterpillar being knocked back as level 10 was hit for Cognitive there. It looks like we are going to see an Entomb this time around, and that's going to allow for a lot of damage. Ring of Frost yep. and then those Thornwood Vines, that's going to allow for a lot of single target damage and a huge burst. Faye loves Ring of Frost. It's something we see, it's not uncommon to see Ring of Frost, but Faye is one of those uh, players who picks Ring of, who has been picking Ring of Frost for a long, long time before really other players or other teams started to catch on. So she's very, very effective with it. She always knows how to utilize it appropriately. And when you have a future Bile as well, I mean, there's just so much zone control coming out here from Cognitive, which is something that they need because they do lack those consistent heals. But between the future Bile, the Entomb, the slows from Jaina's skill set, and the Ring of Frost, as well as a Force Wall, it's all about control in these teams fight for Cognitive. But when you draft that sort of composition, you have to execute execute immaculately. Glarong using the future battle to try to zone out for Ayakona as he's going to have to hit the fountains, get himself back in uh, fighting shape here. But taking a look at the gems, Temple Storm is quite a bank here, Jay Howe. We saw just a moment ago, Faye has poked Zix twice now on the turn and basically able to delay this over and over again. Now, if Cognitive can get a second turn in before, as they are just one short, can they get that in? If they're able to get this, they're going to be able to ride that, hopefully, to level 13, as we do see possibly an engagement down here. The Oracle continuing to go out, and it does look like Tempo Storm finally able to get their first round in. This is going to be huge for them. Between level 10 and level 13, I, they could really even the odds as far as experience goes. It evens up the this, this structure fatigue a little bit, and uh, it'd be a great moment for them. They have great initiation tools between the Maw and the Sundering. I mean, you can use one primary, one secondary for initiation. You put a Blessed Shield on top. They, if they one sort of positional mistake from Cognitive, and they can just get forced down and blown up. We see Glarong is uh, not using the future, actually is going to use the future battle there to zone out for the rest of his team. Iacona is in the bottom lane dealing with this uh, Web Weaver, so this is a little bit of a power play here coming from Temple Storm with Iacona being forced down to the bottom lane. Uh, and they actually, the, the Web Weaver gets cleaned up. The hook onto Rhaegar, though. The Hyperion does come out, Sundering coming out as well, oh, zoning geez. them out, being able to take down Lunara with that, that's the problem with a 5v3, but nice engagement there, the hook came out, they committed, and Tempo Storm playing like pros there, able to turn that around, you can see excellent play right now from Tempo Storm as Jaina and Tassadar are trying to clean up the other two lanes and come back and try and salvage, another hook going in on Sray, I don't know if we're going to have enough damage coming out, Iacona down here in the bottom, putting the force wall, but he is being chased, and nice stun there from uh, Thrall there, once again, taking down Fae for seen any type of assault so excellently done there by Tempo Storm would basically even up this game at the same time Shane their only one gem away is cognitive and they're going to zone it out here as Faye is about to turn in can they get this and Tomb goes up to basically secure yeah. the web weavers that was a good Tomb by Caterpillar just ensuring that right there cognitive put on an impressive defense right there they didn't lose one single tower just kidding they lost two single towers Make it three. They didn't lose a lot, okay? That's the point I'm trying to make here. I thought that they were going to lose a lot more ground right there. Those wave of web weavers are, were significantly stronger than the first ones we saw at the Cognitive just due to the fact that they respond a little bit later. So uh, that's an impressive for Cognitive. They uh, did a good defense right there. All their forts are still alive. And they were able to get themselves on the map as we just saw a moment ago. Now they have themselves a wave of web ears. The uh, main objective right here is going to be pushing down this fort in the mid lane. The reason why that's so important uh, it, is it takes Ooh. away map vision. and Shane, this rotation in the bottom. Oh, yeah. Kale's in a lot see, of trouble. Yeah, Cognitive coming down here as Lunara went down in that top lane, but we did see the rotation. KO is going to go down. Devouring Maul hitting nobody, but we saw Cognitive after they took down that fort, saw that they were pushed very far forward, defending against this bottom web weaver, and now they're going to be able to turn that into another downed fort here in the bottom lane. So nice rotation there from Cognitive sneaking in in the back door.
That was very well done by them. So yeah, with the middle fort going down, and that was the bottom fort as well, this gives Cognitive the room to make an aggressive invasion onto the Bruiser camp if they just decide to do so. Doing that without those forts being down is almost never an option because you have to go through this very narrow corridor and it puts you in a very poor position. Teams can just capitalize on that. Over here, though, we see Hyperion being used. Battlecruiser is online. Stray's very low. He has 44 gems. He can't go down here. The hook's not on the uh, Johanna. If that hook hit Johanna, that would have been 44 gems, a takedown for Cognitive. They just got away by the skin of their teeth right there. The Entomb went down, followed up by the Ring of Frost, but we saw an absolutely amazing Ancestral Healing to be able to keep the needed, necessary ally alive. And then they were able to disengage from that, basically using up several of those heroics and now being able to savage a little bit. The Hyperion, obviously, with the longest cooldown, but well-maintained there by Tempo Storm. We are seeing a one-level lead right now for Cognitive, Pulling away just a little bit. They do have uh, almost enough gems to turn in again, but at the same time, Tempo Storm sitting on 91. Sray down here uh, being entombed here. Shane, this could be trouble right now. Sray, he has 44 gems. He might be going to turn around on. There is no Ancestral right now. It's on cooldown for 25 seconds. There is a Blessed Shield, though, so they might think about turning this around. Glaron hooks up Zix. The follow-up, not there. And uh, that was very, very close. Once again, Sray getting away from it looked like a uh, very volatile situation with so many gems, over 100, bugging out the UI. One dot dot is how many gems that they have, J-Hell. Glaron's got to be in trouble. He lays down the future barrel. There's the Blessed Shield, the turnaround on to Cognitive. And finally, Temple Storm showing some signs of life right now, getting themselves on the map. And more importantly, they should be able to get away from Webweavers here. Goku was split out there, but the rest of his team was there to capitalize on Glaurung. He's not able to get out of there. Well done by Tempo Storm to be able to turn that fight in their favor and turn that into another wave of Web Weavers, which is going to put them on fairly even playing ground right now. The Hyperion coming back up, which means they should be able to secure at least one, de or definitely one, possibly two forts here if they play their cards right. And so far in these last few minutes, Tempo Storm playing extremely well. If they are able to clean up these forts and all the towers that they did or did not get, depending on which caster you're listening to, that will put them at even odds. More than likely, actually put them ahead. Level 16 talents open up the map a little bit. If they maybe get a pick off or two, they can fall back to the boss and really bust this game wide open and bring this to a game number three. We've seen situations where teams bend and bend and bend and bend, but don't break in this battleground, where even when they're down to maybe one or, or uh, one or two keeps with structural damage out of the core, and they just kind of somehow always make a comeback. That rubber band just snaps back in the face of the enemy opponent. Oh, Glaring's in trouble with the future bile. Don't know if he'll be able to get away here. They're going to collapse on him, and he's going to be stuck up against the ropes. He's going to go down here. He tried to be sneaky, sneaking up against that top wall, but sod out there. The stun came out. This is going to be a second fort coming out. They have to be very careful with their positioning. The force wall not being able to keep too many people off. There's not a ton of stuns. We do have Blessed Shield on the board, but they're going to go ahead and commit. Take this down. Shield's not able to save that. Could we see a possible boss grab here as it looks like Tempo Storm rotating back? It could it be a bait, oh. but now Soldier just able to get that Ancestral Healing after the Entomb. That was barely there, Shane. The Ring of Frost goes down. It does catch out Zix with no Ancestral Healing. They got to be careful, but Leoric is going to get taken out despite the fact that he has the damage mitigation. And now the Maw on to the Bambi. The, I think the Deer is going to get taken out. It's Venison for dinner is what Temple Storm is going to get themselves. And with two takedowns here, they might be able to pick up a boss or th they could pick up a boss and then turn in. And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. They're thinking about it a little bit of, uh, of the indecision here coming out from them. This is going to be a huge power play. Obviously, Caterpillar in that wait, Wraith form. Oh, Soldier getting hooked there with that vision. But are they going to be able to follow up? Putrid Bile used once again. But Tempo Storm in pursuit once again. Faye having to be very careful, just missing that Condemn. We do see the re-engagement as Caterpillar is back on board. No boss. And will we see a web, a wave of Web Weavers? Sray in trouble again. The Blizzard oh. coming down does secure the kill there. I believe Sray was able to at least get rid of, uh, deposit that bank of gems that he had available to him. There are web weavers descending upon the map, but no Johanna on the field for 35 seconds. I feel like that these web weavers should be easily cleaned up here by Cognitive. There's no frontliner there to protect the Zagara, protect the Rainer. Thrall can a little bit with Sundering. Obviously, that's not ideal, though, so... Cognitive uh, are, should be able to uh, get themselves back and fight in order here, take these out. And Temple Storm finally has a lead for the first time in this series as a whole. But uh, they might see that lead only, only last for yet but a fleeting moment as Cognitive are out on the map, putting a lot of pressure into this top lane. 
Cognitive being able to be a little bit aggressive with their push, taking out that top four. Shane, one of the things I want to look at, if you pull up the talents there, with that Entomb, and we do see making sure to stay back, obviously with this solo Tassadar, at level 13, we have the increased range on Blizzard with that Stormfront, yeah. and then I saw three waves come down. That's what forced me to look at that Snow Crash, and you can see that was what secured that kill on Sray. So I like this build around the composition that they're going with. So this is... Uh... Very impressive from Temple Storm, showing a good amount of constitution to keep themselves in fight and order and ultimately get themselves ahead in this match. Rainer with that Berserk at level 16 is going to be doing a lot of damage. Caterpillar's caught out though. He is Leoric. There isn't a tomb available, so they got to be careful. Putrid Bile zoning out for the rest of Cognitive's team. Coffin looking kind of an odd spot. The hook on to Zix. There's no follow up though. He should be able to get out of there. And they're actually turning around into Cognitive. Cognitive's in full retreat right here. They forced out the Hyperion, which is a relatively long cooldown. The only heroic that was utilized for Cognitive was that Putrid Bile, which is a short cooldown. So. All in all, no one went down, but uh, Hyperion being forced out is always a win for Cognitive. Saw that in an earlier part of the game, especially when we had Kathleen trying to come around on that Lunara, trying to get there, but that creep was down, basically spotting her out from an earlier rotation, and once again, not able to get in proper position, therefore being forced to retreat once again. We saw quite a few heroics used. Luckily, they're on fairly short cooldowns, as we see Iacona under duress here, but they're going to go ahead and commit to taking down this camp in the middle lane. Tempo Storm, once again, playing very well, just a few gems away from being able to get yet another round of Web Weavers, but could Cognitive get in the turn in first. Man, this is such an even match right now. Temple Storm, though, I feel like that they've finally taken not only the experience advantage, but the momentum advantage as well. There is that lost, that, that lost, that last sport in the bottom lane. Oh, man, a hook on to Zix. Is the, he might force out the Inchestral Healing. It is on himself. Johanna's out of position, though. There's a little bit of split uh, from here at Cognitive there. Oh, I Tassadar Iacona gets taken out from the damage of the Maw, and this is looking great for Temple Storm. The Blessed Shield is there. A beautiful Ring of Frost from Faye, but really it's just delaying the inevitable. And right there, that was great from Temple Storm. One of the ways of dealing with stitches and it's an old adage when playing against stitches if you get hooked just kill the other team and that's exactly what happened temple storm engaged on them the moment that hook was there on the zix and really what ha what was a, a huge mistake there from cognitive is they weren't really focusing down a target very well they were split I love this call by Tempo Storm with Leoric down in the bottom, trying to keep an eye on stuff, getting turned back in. They are going to be able to possibly get a turn in. Sray, he's going to be okay down here. He's continuing to poke, deny it, because that is going to show that they are on top for the boss. And C Cognitive down here fully committing, and we do see the blue web weavers actually come out. They denied yep. it for that top turn in. Oh, Sray. Sray. Is that an even change, though? You get a boss and a round of web weavers, and that is going to push. I mean, we do see the, oh, yeah. the minions kind of in the middle of the map in the bottom and middle lane, but in the top, that boss is going to be pushing hard. This is probably going to be a keep, and this close to level 20, this is going to be firmly in Tempo Storm's favor moving forward. Yeah, I mean, once Tempo Storm consolidate, they can't obviously get aggressive, barring some positional mistake coming out from Cognitive here. They do have the strength of Hyperion, level 20 now online as well. So I would say, obviously, it's it's not ideal for Johanna going down in that situation. Situation. But more importantly, she secured the boss. She 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 secured the boss by being a distraction, and she secured the turn in as well. So a lot of damage is going to be thrown down here. It gives them the room to clean up this last structure in the bottom lane, top lane under obviously under a lot of uh, distress as well. And uh, I I'm not sure if we're going to see Hyperion get utilized here, or maybe they're going to save it once for once Johanna's back on the map and uh, this, Johanna going down there was just really unfortunate. If she didn't go down there. I, this, th that probably would have been at least one keep, maybe even two, and a Cognitive would have been in a very, very tight bind. But uh, as is, they almost have level 20 Storm Tier Talents online, soon soon to be online, for Cognitive, and this is absolutely still anyone's game, j -Hal. I really thought that they were going to be able to take at least four members, clear up some of the lanes. It was a bad call on my part. They weren't able to get any damage on any of the keeps. They did get one of the towers down in that top lane, but Cognitive showing their strength excellently defended here. They're just 10 gems away. Can they get the next round? Obviously, Tempo Storm forced the action. Now the minions are pushed all the way back, basically in the middle of the map. Somebody's going to have to win a fight. Somebody's going to have to force the action as level 20 is now hit by Cognitive as well. We're on even grounds 20 minutes into the game. Shane, this is anybody's game right yeah. now oh man hook off the mark right there from a glarong uh it was close but uh close but no cigar right there sray going up there and just kind of clean up the wave got to be careful here this is a very volatile moment for both of these teams more importantly cognitive have more than enough for a turn in and if they can get themselves a pick off plus a turn in they can push down a keep more than that could potentially be the end of the game because right now sub 20 minutes 
it, the respawn timers are so long. This is a very small battleground, so it only takes you but yet a couple moments to... Oh, Sray's kind of in a... That's an awkward spot. So, uh, it only takes but a couple moments to get to the enemy's inner structures. Glarong laying down the Putrid Bile uh, more defensively to try to zone out for Faye and Coffinluck. I wish she might see an aggressive turnaround. Yeah, there's an Atum on a Goku. The Sundering comes out, getting out to do some damage. The Devouring Maw grabs two members. The Hyperion is up. Caterpillar in a little bit of trouble. Iacona, is he going to be able to survive? Calton Luck, Lunara goes down there. Glaurong on this back end. Going to try and distract as long as he possibly can. He's going to lose 34 gems, dropping back to go ahead and tap well and heal up and do as much damage control as they can. Cognitive is, but Glaurong goes down. I don't think they're going to be able to rotate to get any Web Weavers. Tempo Storm, once again, they've been forcing the action all night. We saw two members once again split. Tempo Storm has been split splitting them all of these yep. last few fights and now they are making a five on three assault they're going to get a keep here can they get another pick and secure the game right now that would be huge for them they want to get to game number three they have to be feeling confident right now and yeah it's they should be able to just to slowly siege this keep down icon is going to throw some shields on there to try to delay the inevitable there isn't a tomb but uh, no follow-up and actually caterpillar has got to be careful uh, because again, this is a solo support Tassadar, which surprisingly has done fairly well, but obviously is not doing w ideally for Cognitive, as they're going to find themselves in a very awkward position. This top keep is the most important keep to take out for any team, because this boss, even though he's not online right now, if, it if he is taken by Temple Storm, he's going to have a free avenue to the core, and that's going to be a sub-23, 24-minute boss. I in that situation, you can almost just push with the boss and slow siege down the core, and almost just win the game on the back of it. What looked to be a very strong early game is Iacona. Can he get the turn in here? No, he's going to have to get out of there. But what looked like a very early strong game from Cognitive is now turning in favor of Tempo Storm. They have the keep down. They have control of the map. They've been playing very well. They've been winning these fights. It's 12 kills to 5. As we talked about, the late game is heavily in favor of Tempo Storm, and one yep. of the things I really like without with that cool that lower cool or excuse me the lower stun duration, we're seeing Berserk at level 16 for Rainer. Yeah, it's huge for him. Oh man, Sarai is caught out of position. He's got to be careful. If he goes down, that's going to be disastrous. Six being very patient with the ancestral healing there. That could have been a very big uh, you know if one of those decisions where if he didn't if he didn't ancestral healing, Sarai went down. Everybody been real critical about it, but he's uh, gonna he's obviously making the right play there. Sarai is able to get away. Ancestral healing still online. Temple Storm soon to be once again in fighting condition. Oh, oh there's a hook there. Got to be yeah, trouble. Got the Iron Scum thrown out. The Blizzard is going to get her away. Of course, Sray, don't forget, does have that indestructible to fall back on. But it is a long cooldown, and it's a very important cooldown as well. So uh, nonetheless, Sray just keeps getting beat on and beat on, but refuses to go down. It's two games in a row. He has nine lives and then some. He has been hooked more times than I can count over the last two games. He's just got a, a knack for staying alive. Obviously, he's on the right hero to do so, but uh, we do see a rotation. Man, Tempo Storm has done an absolutely amazing job keeping Cognitive. They haven't had a turn in, in a very long time. Yeah, and looking at the gems, 53 to 50, obviously Cognitive have enough to get a turn if they so desire, but right now the main focus is on Stitches. Glaring's in a little bit of trouble. He forces out the Hardened Shield a little bit early. Not ideal. Now Leork's in trouble. There's no Wraith Walk. He pops the Hardened Shield. They Can they get the follow-up here? This is going to be very close. They, the Force Wall is there. Wow, Caterpillar narrowly able to get away right there. The hook on the mark, though. Once again, this is on Sray. The Iron Skin does come out. No follow-up, Sray. You are a god in this game. You cannot <laughs> die, apparently. But we do like the plays so far. But once again, not able to get the turn in. We saw a great play, great denial, and continuing to push here. Down in the bottom lane, we do have some minions working their way up yeah. for Cognitive. But that's really all you can say. The next team fight or the next turn in of Web, web Weavers is going to be the main thing right now. We're 25 minutes in, and it's a dead heat right now. Bruiser camp's being picked up by both of these teams respectively. Put a little bit of pressure into that mid lane, but uh, really the big contention here is this turn in right here. There is just not enough for Temple Storm to get a turn in, but obviously Cognitive have more than enough to get a turn in. And that would be huge. 25 minutes, a pretty long battle for Tomb of the Spider Queens. Generally, these the games on this battleground are a little bit shorter than normal. But uh, right now, a wave of Web Weavers for either one of these teams is going to be huge. They're going to be doing so much damage, so much structure damage. Once again, Stray gets hooked, going to be able to iron skin away characteristically. Have we seen uh, Stray doing that the entire match? But with the boss being online, if one team is able to take a favorable team, fight they can just go to the boss they can turn in and more than likely on the shoulders of that just outright win the match
We do see Glaurung up there getting a bit of damage in with Kalthunluck at his back. The hook coming out. Can they secure anything? Goku is the one. This is not Stray. This is going to be Thrall. They are forced to retreat there with Jaina and Leoric down in this middle lane. They've got to be careful. As we see, Caterpillar once again. Faye has to be careful there. But Caterpillar looking once again to possibly try and get a turn in the middle of this. But the creep is now there. We didn't see it yeah. early game. There was a heavy focus. But this creep is all over the map right now. More importantly, it's giving them some vision, not some, a whole bunch of vision, over the south turn in, a little bit of vision over the north turn in, and Temple Storm somehow, through just amazing play, just maneuvering and out, simply out rotating cognitive right there, were able to get themselves a good bank of gems and had just enough to get a wave of web weavers. This is huge for them. They have the, an experience advantage. That's not a very big deal right now, but I mean, that means top lane is going to be pushing in. This is going to be do or die right here for cognitive J Hell. Luckily for them, their bottom wave of minions are in the middle of the map. We do see Tempo Storm rotating over, but this top lane is going to be pushed all the way. This yep. might actually work to Cognitive's advantage for them to rotate up, but we do see a push now coming in the middle from Tempo Storm. If they can secure a kill or two this late in the game, this is Tempo Storm's game to take. The main objective here is to get the keep. Uh, they have to respect the hook. This is, it's always dangerous pushing like this against a Stitches, and we do see that obviously the hooks have been there, Cognitive don't have any really str huge follow-up, it's not like there's a Tyrande Malfur or anything like that, oh man, and Tomb actually missed, uncharacteristic mistake from Caterpillar, he's in trouble, he's gonna get, have to get himself out of there, Soldier just standing his ground right there, he knows that his Orc brother is gonna keep him nice and healthy. Nice and alive. Top lane pushing in is now cleaned up, the Ancestor Hill being forced on his Soldier, he barely is able to stay alive there, that was very close. We do see another amazing heal coming out there, saving once again. Zix has done wonders this game on that Rhaegar with those heals. This middle keep will go down. Shane, I really feel like, all oh, the Sundering just missing and not able to follow up. Calvin Luck is surviving. Can they turn this fight? Faye blinking out of there. Calvin Luck under assault is going to survive, but in this bottom we are seeing the continued assault. Can they continue oh. here as all keeps are down, but Zix goes down, Shane. That's what I was talking about, Jay. How you have to respect the hook. Temple Storm simply staying, staying and hanging around too long. It's just a matter of time before Glarong lands one of those. Now Rainer gets taken out. Soldier's out of the equation. Sray might go down too. I think he knows he's going to go down as he just kind of like, you know what? Look at me. I'm going to be a distraction. Uh, if he does get out of here, it'll be remarkable. More than likely, the Iron Skins on cooldown. Indestructible will pop. They'll either burn through it or they'll just wait it out. And uh, that's going to be three down. For Temple Storm, and right now, Sray, I think, again, he's being a distraction, but staggered deaths 30 minutes in. This is a boss for Cognitive and might just be the game. They overstayed their welcome. Glarong landed the hook. Sray got caught out. This is actually very grim for Temple Storm right now. If they get this boss, they still have 97 gems. All it takes is one turn in, and they're already oh, grabbing man. it because, oh, that leashed. Oh, that's un that's really a big mistake from Cognitive. They could have wow. more than likely secured the game if they aggroed the boss and then they turned in. A miscommunication, a misplay from Cognitive. Nonetheless, it's still going to be a pretty decent situation, but if they got the boss right there, they could have just slit the throat of Temple Storm and gone for the core, but nonetheless, there's going to be no SM work today. There's gonna still going to be a lot of pressure on the map, but this is going to give enough time for Johanna to get back on the map and Temple Storm to put up what potentially could be a strong defense this could go from a 30 minute game to a 35 minute game after that one and that <laughs> is yes. a, a huge huge mistake i i'm not sure what happened there but we are still going to get a push from these web weavers they're going to be very strong they're going to be able to get some of these gates down it's going to be up to tempo storm who's been playing absolutely amazing this second half of the game i'm sure we're going to see a strong defense here they have to be very careful the blizzard coming down that back line they're continuing to poke here is cognitive if they can get oh. any type of pick, there's the hook followed up by the force wall on Zix using the ancestral healing, keeping himself alive. Sundering going on that back line. Hyperion coming up, Shane. Glaring laying down the future pile and tomb on the Sray. There is no indestructible. It's a relatively long cooldown. Caterpillar getting turned around. He has 43 gems, but a three-man ring of frost. There's a Maw as well separating the Leoric from the rest of his team. If they follow up on this, they can take down the skeleton king. The spooky spooky ghost. The hook onto soldier. They meet up balls of the storm of the way, though. There's just so many back and forth fights. But all the meanwhile, top lane has been pushing in, but the keep still remains strong. Hasn't taken a single point of damage. This is remarkable from Temple Storm. What looked like a situation where they're just gonna lose the game. One big misplay from Cognitive in the late game, it just potentially cost them a, a, a win right there and ultimately qualifying for the group stages of Enter the Storm. But the fight continues, the game continues. 30 minutes on Tomb of the Spider Queen is something we don't see that often in Temple Storm. They're marching down the middle lane.
They know that the health is low and without any true heals, they're possibly looking to be aggressive here, but it looks like they're going to go ahead and back off. They were able to get back. One thing to look at is that there are 44 gems already turned in. Missing a hook there is Glaurung, but we do see 44 gems. If they can get another round of web weavers, there's still, you know, a possibility, but Tempo Storm showing their strength. Yeah. Their metal has been tested, but that defense on that last web weaver push shows why Tempo Storm is one of the best teams teams in the country right now and they are still in a very good position to win this right now they are but that being said one hook right now could just win the game for I mean, it almost won them the game the last time we saw that when they got the hook uh, i believe it was on the zix i'm not i don't quite remember who it was but and the and the follow-up takedown on johanna this is momentous for both of these teams cognitive want to take this to uh, just want to end the best of three series right now and get themselves in the group stages but at the same time temple storm are fighting for their life right now and you can tell they are a team that is just fighting their heart out an impressive display being down a majority of the match even if they do lose this it's still an impressive display and making a statement nonetheless but the game continues taking a quick look at the numbers the damage as we expected this late into the game are just absolutely astronomical 116,000 for Rainer 87,000 for Lunara and uh just uh man that's a lot of damage for both of these teams Oh, another hook going down on Soldier, but the Bolt of the Storm was available to Condemn coming in. We are going to see the shield is popped there, but Tempo Storm in full pursuit. We do see Fate getting now just to rotate over. One of the things in that last fight, Goku was not there. He was out of position intentionally, waiting to get a Sundering landed. Unfortunately, there wasn't a prime position, so it is still available. All the heroics are up for Tempo Storm, just about for Cognitive. The hook goes out on Goku. The Force Wall not able to keep him out as we see the Entomb oh. going down. Can they secure a kill? It looks like the Devouring Maul is going to go in. And Glaurung going in with the future file. There's the Sundering Chain. This could be massive for them if Temple Storm can follow this up. Goku's in a little bit of trouble. He already has Sundering. He's a little bit out of mana. The aggressive ball of the Storm forward onto Gotham Luck. But Gotham Luck using that level 20 talent, the speed boost, to great effectiveness right there, able to secure his getaway. Man, this is such a back and forth team fight. And Temple Storm are just continuing to aggressively position themselves forward, actually pushing down the core right now. And I guess in this late game, the catapults are here, the Hyperion on the core as well. This is very, they're, they're, they are walking a tightrope right now, Jay Howe. This it could be either the win or the loss for Temple Storm if they overstay their welcome. They already did it once. There's a hook on a soldier. There's no ball. There is a ball to the storm, thankfully. Blessed Shield on a two. This is such a very tense moment for both of these teams. Again, no true heals. Calvin Luck having to drop back to heal up. They've got to be careful with four people on that front line. The shields are down. Temple Storm being aggressive. This is their moment, Shane. Oh man, the big Entomb on a soldier, but they just are going SM Orc on the core. And when you're level 24, <laughs> 33 minutes into the match, what can you do? You just do so much damage right there. That was absolute. That was so impressive by Temple Storm. They knew that it was in this very unoften seen late game situation where the catapults are doing so much damage and their auto attackers with seasoned marksmen are doing so much damage that if they just slowly and with calculated aggression push down the core, they should be able to get it. And that's pretty much exactly what they did. Utilizing the fact that the solo support Tassadar is very weak in that situation. That is just just very, very strong game sense and great shot calling there from Temple Storm. Bringing this to a game number three. I'm impressed by both of these teams, Jay Hal. Could Tempo Storm have played a better second half of that game? Cognitive obviously had the early game, but as it went on, Tempo Storm just absolutely dominated. They denied yeah. almost every turn in. They continued to gather and gather and gather. They just played an exceptional second half of the game. Yes, it drew on, but that was the respect. They knew that they were one game down, so they had to play somewhat cautious. But when the moment struck, they played aggressive played the proper way, and secured a victory. And we're going to be going to game number three now. We are, guys. So stay tuned. We're going to take a small break. Game number three, the dream is real. Temple Storm making what could be an improbable comeback after being down all of game one, being down a majority of game number two. Or can they take this confidence and morale boost into game number three and take a convincing win and qualify for the group stages? Stay tuned. Thank you to Rockin' and Ghost Samers for that $10,000 prize pool and the peripherals, guys. Give them a shout-out on Twitter. We'll be back in just a moment.